so here is a riddle that may sound something like a Zen cone. When is anti-spin the same thing as in-spin? Now, traditionally, I would think that most of us would answer never. I mean, if they were the same thing, why would we treat them as different things, right? Well, here's the funky thing, though. They do have some similar properties, and there may be a way that we can merge them together into being the same thing. Let me show you what I mean. So to start with, when I'm doing this four-pedal anti-spin right here in box mode, you'll note that on top there's a downbeat, and on bottom there's an upbeat. Just like if I were to do this two-pedal in-spin in this relationship, where I've got the pedals top and bottom, right? Okay, but how can we take advantage of that relationship and turn them into similar, if not the same, things? Aha! Well, it all boils down to plane bending, and specifically realizing that we can think of cross points as being cross points, whether they happen in a 2D space or whether they happen in a 3D space, right? We tend to think of cross points as being this place where the poi head intersects itself as it's going through a particular pattern, right? Which is true even if we're doing 2D patterns like this. So, if for the sake of argument we were to say, all right, I'm going to treat the cross point when I'm going into that pedal as being the same thing as the cross point that I get inside of uh, a two beat, it should result in me doing a 3D pattern. So, for example, if I were to perform that four pedal anti-spin like this, it still looks like a four pedal anti-spin from where you guys are sitting, right? You may be noticing that part of it is going behind my back at one point, but other than that, it should still fit all the requirements, right? Okay, if I turn to the side and perform the same pattern, all of a sudden it's a different story. Now it looks more like a two-pedal in-spin. The reason being that that plane bend that I'm taking across the bottom winds up functioning as both being the arc of the four-pedal anti-spin as well as the loop of the two-pedal in-spin, which is really, really funky. The really cool thing that we can do with that, however, is we can put together both poi doing something like this and create a three-dimensional shape that's going to look different depending upon what angle the audience views it as. So, for example, I can perform a pattern that looks like this, which to you guys, once again, is going to look like I'm going four-pedal anti-spin in box mode, but in split-time opposites, right? Now, if I turn to the side here, it's a different story. It looks now... Woo, there we go. Like I'm going split time same direction with those two pedal inspins, right? How cool. And really what this is, is I'm kind of imagining uh, this right hand pattern right here, uh, kind of tilted off slightly to my left, and the left hand pattern tilting slightly, <coughs> pardon me, off to my right. And essentially this then creates a pattern that feels like the two planes it's operating on are, are like an X directly in front of me, right? Which is cool because it gives me a shape that's going to look like something different depending upon what perspective people are looking at me at. And it solves that classic problem of when we're playing around with 2D shapes, how it looks like a pattern from the audience's perspective one way, but it do doesn't look like a damn thing from an audience perspective on the side of you, right? Okay, so... Here's another version of this that this is actually where I got started on this. Is thinking about a weave as being somewhat similar to two two petal inspin flowers put together. Like so. Almost like a body tracer, right? So once again, I'm gonna take that same technique of imagining that every plane, or rather every cross point, is an excuse to plane bend, and I wind up with this pattern right here which actually, this looks like split time same direction from any angle. It just changes up whether it looks like a four pedal anti-spin or a two pedal in-spin depending upon what perspective you happen to be viewing it at, right? But it also has that cool, like, almost off-balance uh, plane bendy element to it too, right? Um, it's also helpful to cross your arms as much as possible when doing this in order to really preserve the effect. Um, yeah, so... I think this is really, really freaking cool, and uh, it was a fun uh, kind of exploration, plus which I'm reasonably sure that each and every one of these patterns uh, can be considered a two-lobe pro-bend uh, uh, toroid, so we've actually got a use for that now. Um, yeah, so uh, about to head out for the next round of fire Festivals. I hope to see some of you guys out there on the road. Uh, have yourselves a great week, and uh, peace for now.